Hello everybody and welcome to my The Gifted Season 2 Episode by Episode Recap. This video includes 16 videos of my recaps and reviews, so if you've seen these individually you really don't need to watch this, but this just puts them all in one place. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 1. So The Gifted is back for Season 2 and it starts off with a bang, or several bangs as it turns out, with Reva and the Kakus killing the entire inner circle just as we saw in the trailer, although the main thing I took away from the scene was the Mutant Homeland project. Now the Mutant Homeland project in the comics was the island of Genosha, which is pretty much a place for mutants to live alone and in peace. Something this episode did really well was how much the characters changed over the time jump, especially Andy, not just with the hero, though it definitely makes him stick out, but also with his relationship with Alorna. They didn't share many lines in season 1, but I think they will be very interesting to follow this season as their relationship develops. I think Reva Page will be a very interesting character as well, even though she has been painted as the bad guy who she probably is, she does actually seem to want what's best for mutants, but at what price is the question. Caitlyn is also shaping up to be possibly an awesome character, but also to be very reckless, which isn't going to end well for someone who isn't bulletproof. Also it looks like Reed is having surges of his powers whenever he gets stressed out or nervous maybe. So I'm really hoping that by the end of the season he has his abilities. Also Lorna has the baby so her powers go hectic and Marcos tries to find her. Which doesn't work out though I'm afraid. The vision that the Kakus gave Lorna though was quite interesting. Pretty much a world where mutants are on top and the whole covering the American flag scene so reminded me of the Nazis in the Wolfenstein trailer, just saying. Although then again humans are more like the Nazis in this situation. But Lorna has the baby and names it Dawn, probably after Dawn of a New Era or Dawn of the Mutant Age, probably the second one. I was really expecting the kid to be named Aurora though, as Marcos and Lorna had a conversation about that. That was really what I was expecting. It just would have been a cool throwback to last season, but nevertheless, still cool. Overall, this episode progressed a bit slow, but was a great start to the new season. I am also curious to see how long the two main factions stay apart though, because they must have a run-in in either the next episode or episode 3 at the latest in my opinion to keep the story going. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 2. So in this episode there are a lot of flashbacks, but the main one is we see how Thunderbird was recruited of course from the same woman who recruited Lorna, and they go to her for help throughout this episode. And we also get a bit of background information on Thunderbird before she found him. Also she leads Thunderbird to Erg, who in the comics was one of the Morlocks, but he is still yet to be properly introduced in the show. We also see the return of one Jace Turner in this episode and his sort of cycle of adjusting back into normal life after Sentinel services. And by the end of the episode he has sort of adjusted completely to the fact that hunting mutants isn't his job anymore. Although I still think we will see his return in the next couple of episodes. A lot of character development in this episode, not just with Thunderbird but also with Esme and her unwillingness to kill when it probably isn't necessary, both with the guy and Andy, so I would say that she will be on a very different path to her sisters in the next couple of episodes, maybe even portraying them at some point and looking out for Lorna and Andy, and maybe even going back with them to the underground eventually. Also Andy is having very similar dreams to Lauren, which leads me to believe that this will be how they end up, and maybe they are both having premonitions of various outcomes of this encounter, with that leading him to try and call her, and almost leading to his death, but saving himself just in time from Paige. But it was definitely a close one. Also when Lauren is looking at that girl on the tablet or whatever, I'm assuming that that is one of the kids of the Sentinel service members Andy and Lauren killed in Atlanta because of what she said to Reed later in that episode, but it definitely confused me at first. Also close to the end of the episode we see Reed's powers in action, sort of? With him pretty much disintegrating half of a filing cabinet and a chunk of wall. So I'm expecting the slow build up of his abilities to lead to a pretty awesome reveal, maybe someone's in danger and he somehow saves them, or gets really angry and blows something up, or something along those lines. The scene with Marcos and that whole bat signal idea was done a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I expected it to be quite a cheesy scene, but it was actually quite an emotional one with him reaching out to Lorna and his daughter. Also, something is wrong with Dawn, so it will be interesting to see how that is incorporated into the story next episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 3. 
So there's an interesting theme for Marcos this episode that is brought forward by the flashback and that is that Marcos doesn't want to be a father like his father was. I think this beginning scene adds a lot to Marcos' character as well. I still really like the chemistry between John and Clarice and they go on a bit of a quest to find Erg and the Morlocks. They get a bit of information and it looks like Reva and the Kakus are targeting the health department for whatever reason. Also it looks like Clarice is going to be reporting to Erg and the Murlocs, which is a very odd turn of events to be honest. I also think it is a bit of a stretch just to get the Murlocs more involved in the story, but we'll see where it goes. Anyway, the Kakus tracked down Marcos to help Dawn and that ended the way we all expected it to, with Marcos not being able to let go and him trying to take on the entire inner circle alone. You also have to appreciate the chemistry between Marcos and the Kakus, you know, well that's not very nice, just some funny interactions there. Also, Reed and Lauren get into a car crash because Reed gets stressed out and his powers surge again, I guess that is the right word, but they get away with Turner spotting them so you know he will not let that go anytime soon. Also, due to the pan shot at the end on that cop from the front desk, I would say he might end up working with Turner. He clearly has some connection to 715 or mutants due to his reaction when Turner said he lost his daughter. Also, again, a lot of development between Reed, Lauren, and Caitlin, especially with the story from Lauren and with Reed telling Caitlin about his power surging, so hopefully they are back on the same page again. I'm curious to see if Lorna and Andy are being mind controlled, especially with Marco saying Lorna they are in your head, whether he meant that literally or whether it's just simple manipulation will be interesting to see. By the end it looks like Marcos is going to war with the inner circle and Reva Page is getting ready for a revolution, so yeah, good luck with that. One of the main strategy mistakes I think Reva has already made is making enemies of fellow mutants. It is literally the textbook opposite of the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and I cannot see it working out well for her. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 4. So our flashback today is from 16 years ago, before Andy was born, and apparently having Andy was very dangerous, but Reed and Caitlin had him anyway, and this kind of leads into the theme of the episode with Caitlin not being able to stop trying to protect Andy. Meanwhile, others are facing the fact that he is doing everything of his own free will, maybe, we don't really know. So the group goes after Wire, but he's dead, so they take his brother Graf instead, who can also hack, but Reed and Caitlin, mainly Caitlin, goes to very far lengths to make him hack for them. So there was a lot of moral questioning this episode. Also Reed talks to John about his abilities but he goes against everything John told him not to do because his name is Reed Strucker but this definitely won't end well and will probably lead to addiction or reliance on meds. Also weird thing John now takes damage from bullets which I know he said that at close range a shotgun can still hurt but I feel like there might be more to it than that. So Jace is a fairly small character in the sense of the big story this episode, but as expected that cop calls him, they go have a cup of coffee and now they're in love. No, I'm just kidding. Turns out he's a purifier and wants to recruit Jace, and by the end of the episode looks like Jace is a joiner. So it turns out they hacked the hospital cables to find where a prisoner was being held, then proceeded to break that prisoner out and let everyone else go as well. Hashtag mutant uprising. Then Andy and Lauren have a showdown with Lauren losing and being knocked unconscious. Not sure when she is going to wake up from that, but hopefully it's a very long time. No, I'm kidding. I will say though that I didn't really like how this episode was paced. We hardly saw Andy and Lorna up until the end, and it felt like the main group was just chasing a golden goose for this entire episode. Also, I gave Natalie Allen Lind a lot of flack for her acting in season 1, but she is slowly getting better. There is still the odd cringy moment, but it's definitely a lot better than it was. The ending annoyed me though, as I'm sure it annoyed most of you. I was expecting the reveal of who is under that sheet, but nope, never mind that. Let's just end the episode right before they turn towards the camera, because why not? Definitely looks female though, just from the softer features on the hands and face, but who knows. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 5. So our flashback today comes from Dallas, Texas 12 years ago. It centers around when Jace Turner was just a rookie cop and we see his partner who I would guess is where he was first introduced to discrimination against mutants in the police force and even questions it but that doesn't work out too well. So most of this episode, as the title suggests, is the aftermath of the mental hospital with Caitlin and Reed rushing to help out all the patients and Marcos and Clarice going to the Murlocs to house the prisoners they saved from the mental hospital. Also, most of this episode is the Kakus, Andy and Lorna trying to get the prisoner they saved, who is named Rebecca, to use her powers, which turns out is the power to turn things inside out. 
Also, it looks like Jace Turner is getting a divorce from his wife, and after all the drama going down, I can't say I'm surprised, and this will probably send Jace further down the rabbit hole. Also, Jace goes to a purifiers meeting, which is just a cluster of hate, but Jace seems to be helping them out. Also, in exchange for help from the Murlocs, Clarice agrees to help Erg out with stealing food for the people they bought. So Jace and the Purifier show up at the hospital that Caitlin and John are at, trying to find the mutants that escaped from the mental hospital, but they don't find anything because they hide in that room. Also, the fellow with the acid skin died, which pissed off John a lot, which makes sense considering they were both pretty similar people, both military and both mutants. So Andy and Rebecca go out, have a burger and a milkshake, kiss, and uh, you know, destroy a cop car. Just usual teenage mutant stuff. Also, the mutants that join the Murlocs have to mark their faces with the mutant brand thingy they all have. Also, by the end, it looks like Jace and the Purifiers are going to go after the mutants where they live, which is insane. So this was a really good episode, a lot of dialogue, Blink talking to Erg, Rebecca and Andy, Jace and the Purifiers. Also, it looks like most of the nation is in disarray and in constant protests after the breakout from the mental hospital. You know this because it is shown on like 10 TVs through the episode. That's really my only complaint about the episode that felt way too shoved down our throats. Uh, also, sadly, the guy with the acid skin died. When I first saw him, I thought he was going to be a much bigger part of the story, but I guess not. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 6. So our flashback today comes from the Kaku sisters from eight years ago, where they are pretty much forced to use their powers to find a mutant's family, which kind of shows why they don't care about humans, which honestly is kind of fair. And we find out Creed Financial invested in cloning them, that's why they are the next target. And there were also th more than three, there were actually five, but they were killed. So also Rebecca and Andy are getting closer and closer, and I'm kind of scared she is manipulating him, but I could be wrong. Also, Lorna is quite pissed off with Reva because Reva is not compartmentalizing information about the missions the group is preparing for. She is keeping all of the information to herself, putting Lorna on edge. Also, Turner is shaping up to be a great leader for the Purifiers, which I'm not sure is a good thing. And Lauren and Andy are having more dreams about each other, almost as if they are communicating through dreaming. Which is also now having physical repercussions with Lauren's finger bleeding when she leaves the dream. Reed is also beginning to train with Thunderbird, finding out that he is definitely not in control of his powers, and they are most likely linked to anger. Also, Shadow returns and we hear his story while he is giving advice to Reed, when the main group heads to the new mutant underground after apparently the Purifiers bombed a church. But they didn't hurt any mutants in the process, so they used the bombing to draw all mutants to the underground and round them up, with of course Turner leading the charge. Next up, Lauren and Caitlin go to see Dr. Taylor, who they got her name from Acid Man, as I've taken to calling him, and we see footage- well, actually, no, we don't see footage, but we can insinuate that Rebecca turned guards inside out at the mental hospital, and that Rebecca actually killed her own family, which is lovely, I guess? Esme is really becoming the outcast of the three with her wanting to avoid mind-controlling people, and with her now having that burn on her arm by that human flashlight, I believe they called Marcos. So Shatter Shatters, I guess? Or is Crumbles the correct term? I'm not really sure. But looks like Shatter is dead. Sadly, really liked that character from the first season. Or at, le at the very least, he is captured by the Purifiers. But Marcos and the gang get away through a wall that Reed broke through, so looks like he is getting more and more in control of his powers. Or at least, it did look like that, until the end where he pretty much puts holes in everything, and can't kind of turn off his abilities now. Also, Esme pretty much says that she is on Lorna's and Dawn's side before her sisters and Reavers. Called it. So, last up, throughout the episode, Reva was pretty shady. She was texting someone we can only name as QM. Whether that's a partner or something, we really don't know. And she was calling someone talking about a fallout. We're not sure who these people are yet or if it is just one person. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 7. So our flashback today is from Chicago from 8 years ago, with Reva actually arguing the side of the humans and arguing the coexistence ideal, which is a big change in 8 years. With what looks like purifiers or at least a group of mutant haters killing her friend, which I'm pretty sure is the story she told Andy about several episodes ago. 
So Reed is still having his power surges, pretty much destroying anything he touches, so the group decides to move him to the clinic, so Thunderbird, Blink, and Marcos fortify a vehicle so they can get Reed to the clinic without blowing apart the vehicle. So Reed is moved and Thunderbird builds a little metal platform for him, which I just thought was a little funny. Anyway, Marcos is on to Clarice and her deal with the Morlock, so it's only a matter of time, and tells Thunderbird to ask her about it. So Reva goes to that dinner that she was talking to the guy about last episode and it turns out that she was working on kidnapping him because he works at the bank, Crude Financial of course, and they need to get him to disable the mutant detection system otherwise the mission will be a bust. It's actually pretty sad as well with all the threatening of his kids. It's really crossing a line even for Reva in my opinion. So Jace returns and he's still finalizing his divorce, also he goes to a meeting with a dude named Benedict Ryan, who is a newscaster, we saw him on the TV a few episodes back talking about how dangerous mutants are, but he is a purifier or at least sympathetic to the purifier's cause. Also Jace pretty much turns down exposing Sentinel services, which you have to respect at first, even though what Jace is doing is arguably wrong. So the group heads off to the bank with Esme staying with Dawn and the group attacks the bank, right after getting their epic walking in shot. Also apparently the Creed Financial Bank Vault is made of adamantium, which is a nice little nod to Wolverine of course, but that explains why they really needed Rebecca, because even some of the strongest mutants can't break through adamantium, but Rebecca can turn it inside out. So by the end of the episode, Reed seems at least a little bit better and he is going to see a lady named Madeline, who worked with his father so maybe she can help him with his power surges. Also, the bank heist was successful and Reva actually wants to let everyone go, which I wasn't expecting, especially after her whole point about no loose ends. But Rebecca pretty much wants to kill them all and does so, turning the entire room inside out, including Reva's boyfriend, which I'm sure won't end well. Also, looks like Jace is willing to go on the air and expose Sentinel services now. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 8. There are flashbacks all through this episode, but our start flashback today comes from seven months ago with Lorna and Marcos talking about their parents, specifically Lorna's father. I mean, Magneto wasn't name dropped or anything, but I guess it got close. The episode picks up after the bank heist with Lorna going off on Rebecca and Rebecca leaving, but she does come back and I'm sure she'll be in future episodes. So Reed, Lauren, and Caitlin go to see the doctor who worked with Reed's father, and it looks like she can help Reed get in control of his abilities. Also, apparently Reed will die if he doesn't get treatment, which came out of nowhere, but okay then. Also, apparently the doctor's brother founded the Purifiers, which is very interesting, and she might be on a path to a solution for all mutants. We also get confirmation that the Fenris twins shared dreams, so that explains Andy and Lauren's dreams. So we get another little flashback down the line for Lorna with her being in Missouri 12 years ago and that's where she got that little disc thing which she got on her 13th birthday from her father and a lot of this episode actually focuses on Lorna with smaller stories just sort of going on in the background. Our next Lorna flashback is 6 years ago where she destroyed a guy's car which was actually pretty funny. So Thunderbird and Blink get on Rebecca's trail while Marcos makes some calls to some people, but then Lorna shows up with Dawn and tells Marcos that she is sending Dawn to a school in the Swiss Alps, or at least that's what we think, but she actually sends Dawn to live with her aunt. Meanwhile, Thunderbird and Blink find Rebecca and she tells them that the Inner Circle were looking for something called Regiment in the bank files, and apparently it is a tech company. In the end, Rebecca is captured by Fade, so what's going to happen to her, we're really not sure yet. I'm sure we'll find out in the next couple of episodes. But this has really been a massive episode for Lorna and the development of her character. It's really been Lorna's episode. She also finally got her comic book headband, which looks even cooler than I expected it to. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 9. So our flashback today comes from a year ago with Rebecca and her family having breakfast with there clearly being an elephant in the room, so her parents called Sentinel Services to arrest her because she almost killed her teacher. In modern day she is back at the inner circle being spun around in a box so she can't use her abilities to escape. Both Marcus and Lorna are dealing with the loss of Dawn in their own way with Marcos hate and revenge and with Lorna keeping herself busy. Later in the episode, Andy breaks Rebecca out of the weird torture box, but Rebecca goes up to the penthouse with Andy trying to kill Reva. Andy stops her and she knocks her head on a wall, killing her, which was actually a really cool scene and a heartfelt moment, and not as cheesy as I was expecting it to be. Anyway, Andy is back on board after he finds out the target, though, and has a pep talk. 
So Marco Thunderbird and Blink, or as I call them, the A-Team, go to find an executive of Regiment Technologies. And by find, I mean kidnap, and by kidnap, I mean torture. Well, well there's not any torture, but close enough. Anyway, things go bad, and Blink and Thunderbird get shot at, which is golden, and it turns out Regiment controls all of the mutant power dampening collars in all prisons, which is just fantastic. And very safe, I'm sure. What idiot thought that system up? Lauren, Caitlin, and Reed spend most of the episode plotting against Crazy Lady Scientist, with them trying to destroy Lauren's blood, but Noah is the MVP of the episode and releases his powers, allowing them to escape. Anyway, the executive from Regiment finds something, but Fade creeps in and shoots him before he can tell John and Marcos what he found, but they capture Fade. So Jace Turner is back after a couple episodes in the dark and he's becoming a bit of a celebrity among the purifiers and Jace is organizing a civilian militia which leads him to the clinic with a group of purifiers, allowing them to capture Thunderbird but Marcos and Fade escape. By the end of the episode, the inner circle destroys the collar facility and mutants all over the United States in prisons, detention facilities and mental hospitals alike are set free. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 10. So The Gifted has returned after a very long break, but let's break this down. So today's flashback comes from Atlanta three years ago with a pretty cool John, Lorna and Marcos moment, talking about loyalty and dependence on each other, which is quite ironic now, isn't it? Anyway, we jump back to present day, and Andy throughout most of the episode until the end, I guess, is considering going back to his family. With Lauren and Andy talking through dreams, and it seems pretty clear that Andy wants to return to his family in at least some way. So the Struckers return from the lab, and Marcos fills them in on John being captured, with them deciding to reach out to the Inner Circle to trade Fade for information. So Marcos meets up with Lorna, reminding her of the pledge she made in the flashback three years ago, and Lorna finds the building where John is being held, and Andy convinces Lorna to help even though she reluctant at first. So they go to the apartments, and we get the Strucker family reunion, which I expected to be extremely cheesy, and it actually wasn't a bad scene with of course some coldness between Lauren and Andy. Jace actually spends most of the episode trying to keep the purifiers from torturing Thunderbird, but Jace doesn't believe anything he is saying, even though he is telling him the truth. Eventually Thunderbird gets through to Jace though. Lorna and Marcos cause a distraction at the purifier compound, while Lauren, Andy, and Clarice sneak in, and everything John said is pretty much ruined, with Turner going ballistic, putting several rounds of buckshot into his chest. Which is just lovely, and Jace almost kills him but he runs out of bullets, thankfully. John is by far one of the best characters. Also, Ted is almost killed, getting knocked down by a door. Yeah, it was worse than it sounds. So now Jace is on an even bigger warpath than before, I guess? They escape, but not before Andy quite brutally almost kills a purifier and makes a speech to his parents on Lauren that makes him sound like a genocidal maniac, which ultimately pushes them further apart. But on the bright side, Marcus and Lorna share a lovely little moment before Andy and Lorna piss off back to the inner circle, ending the episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 11. So today we flash back to New Orleans 1985 with Andreas von Strucker picking up the music box seen in previous episodes, with it having some sort of modification. Also, Reed tells us that the song is called The Earl King. It's about stealing kids and the parents who don't listen to them or something along those lines. Reaver is working on recruiting new mutants for her whole mutant homeland thing and Lorna isn't really too happy about it because they destroyed a cruise ship and killed thousands of people which means they will probably make perfect soldiers for Reva. Also, Lauren starts throwing frisbees in her dreams and having memories of Andrea von Strucker dying. Also, even Ted is all like, damn, Jace, chill out, plenty of time to catch all those pesky mutants. But Jace is trying to track down Marcos and the group for some sweet, sweet revenge. Marcos travels to different undergrounds to find anyone who can help, but is intercepted by Lorna in the process. Basically, Lorna needs his help to stop the three cruise ship mutants and figure out what Reaver is planning. So he and Clarice go to the Murlocs, which causes some drama between them. Also, Marcos sees the chick he was making googly eyes at a few episodes ago, and they share a moment, but he shuts it down and gets some good advice about forgiveness taking strength. Also, Erg is still trying to get Clarice or Blink to join the Murlocs. So in a turn of events, the worst copy of her shows up at the apartments, but Lauren distracts them in all as well. Next up, Ted and Jace find some mutants, and while Jace is talking to one, Ted shoots the other because he, and I quote, lifted his hands, but apparently he was sitting down. But Jace lies for him, and also I found the comparison between the clan and the purifiers quite accurate. 
Jace isn't really a purifier, even though he runs with them. He just doesn't really share a lot of their ideologies, just some of the less genocidal ones. This episode partly ends well, with Marcus and Lorna seeming to be good again, and John and Clarice talk things out. How long that will last, no one knows. Also, Evangeline calls, telling John that he, she is gathering the underground to fight before it's too late. At the end of the episode, Lauren finds the hidden compartment in the box with a letter saying, We will not live to see the future we longed for. We leave this to you, a piece of me and a piece of my sister, intertwined to make one. It is up to you to carry on the fight. This causes Lauren to go all mental and threaten the landlord. I'm not really too sure what this letter means, but since they're more powerful together, I'm assuming it has something to do with either gaining more power or using their power. Also, Marcos and Lorna catch Reva meeting with the McLaren P1, I mean Benedict Ryan, the anti-mutant guy, and it seems they are swapping envelopes, which I'm sure will be interesting. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 12. So today's flashback is from Gainesville, Florida 14 years ago with Clarice and a girl named Lily running from abusive foster parents and these flashbacks continue throughout the episode with Lily deciding to go back but she was killed in the process. So in this episode, Caitlin and Lauren decide to go see Danny, who appeared in early season one with them hoping his firm can help them with Benedict Ryan. Lauren and Andy also have another shared dream with Lauren knocking Andy down pretty hard and Andy learning about the physical ramifications of these dreams. Also, the Frost convince Andy to bring Lauren into the inner circle, and Lorna warns Marcos about it. Sarit has a flashback about the music box while it's playing, causing his powers to surge once again, but it goes when he throws the music box on the ground and finds the letter from Andreas von Strucker. Most of the group, including Erg, goes to the Underground's meeting, and Lorna informs them that the three mutants from last episode are going to kill Evangeline. By the time the group gets to the building, it has been blown up, leading to Johnny and Erg having a big argument, and we finally get to see Erg's powers in combat. We don't really know if Evangeline is dead, though. That is just what the characters are assuming, but until we see a body, who knows. Also, essentially, Clarice says goodbye because she doesn't want to watch Johnny kill himself for a fight they can't win, with Clarice pretty much joining the Murlocs. Caitlin and Lauren meet with Danny, but Danny is wearing a wire and plans to set them up. He gets them to leave, but he says that Benedict Ryan isn't just a talking head, he is secretly running the purifiers, and pretty much all of the government is compromised by the inner circle. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 13. Our flashback today is from Detroit six years ago from the perspective of Erg or Leo, a name which really doesn't suit him. But he is betrayed by his human girlfriend Pam who is working for Sentinel Services, and this is where I believe he lost his trust in humans being able to coexist with mutants. For most of this episode, Lorna is also doing her part on the inside, finding out that the next attack is on the White House, Nightcrawler style, but with explosives instead of claws. So, Clarice is carrying her weight with the Murlocs, and on a food run, Glow gets shot, and Clarice wants to take her to a hospital, but instead goes to Caitlyn, and brings her and Marcos down to the Murlocs. And Caitlyn puts the post-apocalyptic pirate in his place several times, which is fantastic to watch. But they go to the clinic and get a serum to help Glow, leading to purifiers showing up at the clinic, but them still escaping just in time to save Glow. Lauren is also not sleeping because of the plot the Frost sisters have with Andy to probe her mind, and her methods for staying awake are extremely similar to the ones I used to get papers finished the night before. But eventually Lauren falls asleep and combines her powers with Andy, leading her to leave and leaving a note saying she needs to go away and figure things out. But Reed and John coax her out of her almost fight or flight or primal state of mind. Lorna also gets Marcus a time and place that one of the three mutants will be as he is getting too close to the truth that she is spying for the underground. So Marcus goes to kidnap him but gets shot in the process, and I believe killing him with his lasers. Also, Reed is giving Lauren some sort of the serum, whether it's a variation I'm not sure, to suppress her powers at least temporarily. I will say though that the show is starting to get boring in some aspects, almost every episode is the same in the way that the group gets together, makes a plan, executes the plan, then they split off into their little units. The Gifted has been at a standstill for several episodes and it is starting to get really noticeable, to the point where this entire season, shy of maybe 20 minutes, has felt like filler. Don't get me wrong, I am still really enjoying the show, but something big needs to happen very soon, whether it's a death or a big event. 
Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 14. So after all this time we finally get another episode of The Gifted, with our flashback starting 4 years ago, with Reaver essentially recruiting Benedict Ryan to create the Ryan Hour, and that is how it all essentially started. Skipping back to present day, Reaver gives Ryan a mission with the location of the Morlocks, and Ryan gives it to Turner, essentially promising him the command of Sentinel services, if he takes the mission of course. And Ted got out free after killing that kid at the youth center. Also Lauren is reacting badly to the power suppressant speaking German in her sleep and Marcus made it home after getting shot and survived luckily. Tensions in the inner circle are also running high for most of the episode after Max disappears. Lorna also can't call out and nobody can leave. But before long, Reva finds Max's body, and eventually thinks they found the spy who is Sage, because Lorna used Sage's login to check the security footage so Reva kills Sage, or at least we think she did, we didn't actually see her kill her. Clarice or Blink is also trying to get Erg to open his doors to mutant refugees and they share a little tension filled moment before they notice that Jace, Ted and his team are in the tunnels. With Jace figuring out the little false wall trick pretty quickly to be honest, maybe even faster than Marcos. Clarice calls Marcos and Reed to find a place to hide the Morlocks while Jace sets a trap for Mason, taking out the majority of the group's fighting mutants. So the Morlocks have no choice but to evacuate, and there is a cool little scene of Clarice taking back what she said about fighting for a lost cause not being m noble but foolish. Also Reed has an epiphany and decides that he's going to stop taking the serum and let his X-Gene return. Anyway, what fighting Morlocks are left decide to make a stand and hold off the purifiers as long as they can. This includes Erg. Clarice gets all of the Murlocs out, but eventually the Purifiers learn not to shoot Erg and kills most of the other Morlocks instead. But Clarice gets Erg out, and then Clarice is shot by Turner, with John standing right there. Which would have been sad if they didn't essentially show us her death scene in the bloody promo. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2 Episode 15. Our flashback today is from two months ago, with Clarice opening up to John, which of course the purpose of this is to put more weight on their relationship so we understand how John reacts to her death, and the way he blames Erg and the squabble they get into. The inner circle is getting to the end of their plan for the mutant homeland, and are now planning to attack the government buildings to finalise their grip on control. Get some good Andy and Lorna moments as well, with Andy saying that Lorna is the one who taught him about making sacrifices, which is quite a sad moment for Lorna, I think. And he does sort of pull away from the whole killing mantra by the end of the episode though, seeming quite hesitant. This is a really good episode for Jace as well, or at least at the start, with him facing the consequences of his actions and essentially realising that he is just a pawn for Ryan, and even confronting him about it. Another pretty insane moment for Reed as well, he ends up killing Ted with his powers, so unfortunately that might be what brings Jace back to the purifiers. Also, Caitlin and Lauren are on the run for most of the episode, and most of the Morlocks with them end up captured so they can escape. Lauren and Caitlin are almost captured, but Reed comes in clutch with his abilities. Lorna is about to leave the inner circle as well, but she is trying to convince Andy to leave with her, after telling him the truth about Reva working with the Purifiers and Benedict Ryan. But Andy is too busy throwing himself a pity party until Reed tells him about killing Ted. Then he decides to return with Lorna, so we get the Strucker family reunion again, and we get the Marcos Lorna reunion, which is better than the Strucker reunion by far. Reva also notices that Lorna and Andy are gone, deciding to kill them apparently. At the end of the episode, John hears Clarice's voice, which I found very interesting. I think one of the best theories for that is that she is between everything. Which I say with air quotes because she said she could be nowhere but everywhere in the flashback this episode. And the fact that John says that he can still feel her would contribute to this considering his mutant abilities. This is also the second to last episode of the season, which has come up very quickly. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Gifted Season 2, Episode 16. So after many months and many weeks without episodes, we have finally reached the end of The Gifted Season 2. It felt like an extremely long season. So this episode we get many flashbacks that shapes part of the episode, with Reed and Caitlin giving their reactions to 7.15, having young Andy and young Lauren. 
and having it mirroring the 9-11 terrorist attacks even more than it already did. So the great plan that is concocted by all these amazing minds is that Lauren and Andy will combine their powers and take down the entire inner circle high rise. Which is just a great plan, can't see any flaws in that except for the thousands of other people that would probably also be killed in that scenario. The group is preparing to attack until Reva six the purifiers on the group led by Jace Turner and my favourite interaction of the episode is definitely Reed saying, where'd you get all these guns? And Caitlin replying, it's America Reed, stores sell them. Fade sneaks the triplets into the apartments and takes Andy and Lauren, but John tracks them and we pr get probably the coolest Thunderbird moment since the beginning of the show, and we get Thunderbird in as close to his comic attire as I think we will for a while. But Erg comes out of nowhere and helps him out so Thunderbird can take down Turner, which he does but doesn't end up killing him, just hospitalizing him. Also Erg and John make up. We get to see Fenris in action once more, with the triplets forcing them to take down Sentinel services, but Reed and Caitlin getting Lauren and Andy back with Esme doing the right thing and coming to Lorna's side, with her mind controlling Benedict Ryan to confess his crimes at the end. Which kind of goes against everything that was just established like 5 minutes ago, but pfft, whatever. She joins the underground by the end of the episode. So the A-Team storms the castle facing off against the ship mutants. I know I should learn their names, but honestly, I don't care. They really just feel like filler characters. Caitlin takes down Fade and Reed runs to take down Reva. Also another great line this episode, Reva saying, Read your history books. That is the only way you, that you could build a nation. But all in all, Reed goes critical with another great line, blowing the entire penthouse up, supposedly killing himself and Reva. But the episode ends with Clarice coming out of nowhere saying, I need you all to come with me, there is something you need to see. With her portal leading into what looks like the ruins of an exploded building. So, uh, yeah. I also want to say that I was a little disappointed that Andy and Lauren weren't included in this final fight against Reva. I know they were recovering and all, but come on, you just threw aside arguably the two most powerful characters in the show. So overall, like I said at the beginning, this season feels like it has been going on forever, with it starting in September of 2018 and only just ending at the end of February 2019. I think the season was good, with its strongest episodes definitely being the beginning and end, but honestly getting kind of lost in the middle. I will probably be making a predictions video for the possibilities of season 3 over the next couple of days, but feel free to tell me what you thought of this season in the comments below. You've made it to the end of the video, congratulations! If you want to like and subscribe and maybe even turn on notifications, it would be much appreciated. And make sure to check out the other videos on my channel. Have a great day and I hope to see you in the future, bye!